Hey everybody, welcome to Let's Play FTL Faster Than Light. I'm I'm John, and with me is is. Hey, my name's Dave. Yes. FTL is a sort of spaceship combat strategy game with game made by you know Subset Games, which is a very small uh, outfit. I'm not sure where they're based in. It was actually it was actually funded by a Kickstarter, at least partially. It was actually one of the original Kickstarters. I remember that. And this one has actually come out. Which yeah, is, this one actually was released. Which is a plus. All right, now be pretty basic option screen. It's not like a graphically intensive game, so it's not like you, it's not like you need a whole bunch of sliders or anything. There's pretty basic. There's you can turn on and off dynamic backgrounds, vertical sync, full mm -hmm. screen. There is there is a there is a colorblind mode, which is nice. Yeah. Um. Achievement pop-ups. You know, pretty bit sound volume, uh, music volume. Pretty basic stuff, but it's really you don't need a whole lot for this. You know, they did a um, behind-the-scenes look at this game, and I remember they talked to the, the two... Because this was actually made by two guys. Okay, yeah, I knew subset was very small. And um, they said that the what they were inspired by was Firefly. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. They said that they liked that whole idea of being this very small uh, crew of people. Just okay. kind of going... Just running around trying to fix up the ship and keep it running. Okay. You know, like the show. All right. I, I don't know, the game. The game actually kind of makes me think of the old, uh, the old, the old uh, science fiction RPG Traveler. Which oh, okay. Is, mo mostly because of the uh, Traveler was notorious. Was notorious. You could actually die in character generation. Um, oh yeah. Wait, and, wait. You, you wait, your character can can die in character generation. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Here, here's the control uh, configuration screen. You can set lots of hotkeys. Well, well, I'll, I'll, I'll explain. Basically, in Traveler, it's like... So, let's begin the game. Okay. I'm gonna try to avoid a, a huge... I'm gonna try to avoid a huge info dump at the beginning by sort of explaining mechanics as they come up. Yeah, well, this, the mechanics are pretty... I'd say they're pretty straightforward, and they're really easy to understand. Yeah, you, the game, you can pick it up pretty quickly. Yep. Okay, now, there's a bunch of ships you can choose from. Well, to start off, you only have one, the Kestrel. Yeah. It's your basic you get ship. more. Like, as you play, you actually get a whole lot more. Yeah, you by, know, com it's, by completing it's the game and completing certain quests and such. You know, what's also very cool is that they also did this huge, huge update to the overall game. Yeah. Which I thought was very cool. And, and, and uh, as you can see right here, Advanced Edition Content. Disabled yeah. or enabled. I'm keeping it enabled. That gives you new, new weapons, yeah. new quests, a new alien race. Yeah, I heard they even like did a little graphical update date to that as well. Did they? Apparently, apparently, it's some, in some, somehow in Gaul involved uh, Chris Avalone, I believe. Oh, of, oh, the, the, the Obsidian Wing guy. The, also, the guy, who did the, the guy who did the music for Wing Commander, right? No, the no, no, okay. the guy who works for like Obsidian and he's working on uh, Torment, Tides of Numenera. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Music for Wing Commander. What on earth are you? <laughs> I'm, starting to, I'm starting to, I'm starting to question the wisdom, wisdom of bringing you along on this voyage, Dave. I... <laughs> if you can't be professional, Dave, okay. Okay. Well, when, you play, when you play this video game. Now, okay, Advanced Edition had also added a additional hard mode, which we are not going to be using. Because we're playing this game, we're, we're going to be playing this time around at least, we're going to be playing on easy because I suck. You see, in easy mode, increased scrap rewards and easier enemy generation. So we'll only die 75% of the time. Roughly. And we're going to be going, Tarf will go with these regular... Hey, actually going, but before we do anything, do, did you want to uh, uh, rechristen our ship? Oh, like should we? we? Yeah. All right. All right. No longer the Kestrel. Yes. All right, what are we going to... What do, what do you want to name it? All right, I th all right. I think that's a name that reflects our our <laughs> hopes and dreams for this expedition. <laughs> the USS Alderaan has nothing but success to look forward to. I'm sure. Oh well, with this crew, absolutely. Yes, we've got it. Yes, we've got we've got a crack force aboard, as you can see, John, Dave, and John helming the. Uh, I'm a like, oh, yeah, you're. I'm yeah, at the helm, you're, Dave. You're at is... the helm. Who am I? Am I doing engines or am I at? Uh... Oh, okay. I think you're the. I think your your weapons. I think Nick is engines. Okay, very good. But well, I like we'll the see. fact that we're just tapping away at, a, at the uh, keyboard endlessly in that whole like act busy. It, it's it's it's, a, it's it's sort of like the outer space equivalent of like people in RPG towns who just sort of like pace in place. 
Yep. All right. And it begins. And die. The data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing Rebel fleet can catch up. Tip. Upgrades. Don't forget to upgrade your ship. Often shields are the highest priority, but don't underestimate the usefulness of subsystems. We'll get to upgrades in a little bit. Now, right. the, the game is pretty light on, like, setting and world building. You don't know really what this Federation is, or what, why these Rebels are rebelling against it, or why it's worth it, why it's worth fighting to preserve the Federation, or pretty much anything. It's just... Mm -hmm. It's... The plot, the plot is just kind of window dressing. Oh, yeah. It's, um... All right, now... There's no... And also, there's no impulse power, so you can't, like, drive around. It's all just, like, jumping from place to place. And it's uh, totally randomized. All right, now here's... Here's our first sector. It's... These sectors are randomly generated each time. Now, here's, um... Here's us. Or our location. These green lines indicate places we can reach. Yes. In, in a single jump from where we are now. The exit over here is... Is, um... Well, the exit... That'll take us to, uh, allow us to move on to another sector. Mm hmm And we'll have to, there's a time constraint that I'll explain in a little bit. And so we can click, and here you can see, I said these yellow lines indicate where we could go, where, where we could jump to from there. So you can do that, you can sort of plan out your route to make sure you don't accidentally jump to a place where you can't, you know, get, get to another one quickly. Enough. You know, this is a, that's actually a uh, looks like that's a new improvement that they made because I don't that, remember that in the uh, original. It, it's a new. It was an option on the option screen. I wouldn't be surprised if it was added for the advanced edition. Okay. Now you don't want to. You generally don't want to make a beeline straight for the exit because you want to. Like I said you want to acquire resources and whatnot. Before. This is what it feels a lot. It, this way, it kind of feels more Star Trekky. You know what I mean? Like every single place they go to, uh, something's gonna happen. And let's here an unvisited location. Yep. And, begin, uh, and we're off. And we lose. <laughs> and you're going to curse us, and dude. I, uh, as, you, uh, oh, as you jump into the system, a pirate advances on your position. You're refusing all hails. Prepare for a fight. Okay, our first battle. Now, you, the battles move in real time, but you can pause them. Yep. Now, down here, this bar, this is our power distribution. Uh, we pause so we, of course, can make our peace with God. Exactly. And... Now the, the, these three bar, these bars indicate our like what we have in reserve that we can allocate. This is shields, engines, medical bay, life support, and uh, weapons. Yep. Now we don't really need the medical bay right now since no one's hurt. So I'm gonna take you right click. You take some power out of that. You're gonna put that into the engine into more engine power. That will um, increase our ability to dodge enemy fire and allow our FTL charge to charge up faster if we need to make an escape. And I'm gonna put fully power the weapons. Now I have two weapon systems here: the Artemis missiles and the burst laser. The burst laser takes two energy. Artemis takes only one, and they both have their own like charge up times. Now you only have like limited missiles. You too. have lim you have limited missiles, which is indicated here. That number I have eight. Uh, la uh, energy weapons and projectile weapons they don't have that limitation. Now, but the, the advantage of missiles is now you can see this bubble around them. That's their shield. And this blue dot indicates they have one, it's one strength. Now you can fire, your burst laser fires three, a burst of three shots once it's charged. And it'll take one to, uh, you know, break the shields, and then the others will hopefully, you know, hit the ship itself. But the thing about missiles, and later on bombs, which I'll explain when we get to them, they go, they ignore shields. So you can, you can get a, you can get a hit on them before the shields are down with these, with missiles. And now see, these are all their systems that you can target individually. This is the helm, life support, shields weapons, engines. So I'm going to target their shields with my missiles. And... I don't see why you need power for oxygen. It's, well, you, you can get away with turning that off for a little while. No, seriously! How bad do you need to breathe, guys, really? It's, um... Okay, now you can see the bars are slowly filling. The art, the missiles will, will fill before the burst laser, but I'm actually not going to aim the burst laser just yet. Because if you let them fire, if you if you just aim, set the bolt to fire automatically, the Artemis will fire first, but the burst laser will reach the target first, so it'll you might needlessly waste a shot against the shields. Okay, there's my missile. It's, you can see your weapons sort of extend out from the sides like this. And it's away. Oh, and you see that was an impact on our shields. Now you can see the, the missile on its way. Hopefully to hit them. Let's see. 
And success. All right. Oh, but we're, now you can see we're taking a hit ourselves, this red line. That's a mm -hmm. beam weapon. I'll, I'll, when I pick one up for myself, I'll explain a bit more about how those work. But those can hit multiple sections of the ship, potentially. Now, my engines have turned orange. No, no, but, well, first of all, their shield has turned red. Their shield generator is now knocked out. They'll have to repair it if they want to have any shields. So now I'm going to target the burst laser at their weapons. Ooh, I missed two hits. Their weapons are now inactive as well. Now notice our engine is orange. That means it's damaged but not completely knocked out. So our crew, so Dave has to start repairing it now. Oh, Dave, apparently you're actually the engine man, not the gunner. Oh, okay. Dave has, so Dave has to repair it now. And you can see this bar here. When it takes damage, that basically reduces the number of bars it can have in it. So now it's running at only one bar capacity. And Dave will have, and it'll have to be gr fixed before you can get it full again. I've taken some mild third-degree burns. Yeah, and also, the we weapon hits, they, they hurt the crewmen who are in the room when they yes. hit. So you notice Dave only has 15, 80, I mean, Dave only has 85 hit points, whereas the rest have uh, 10, I mean, 100. Okay, so now, now we're not really in any urgency to fire them now because our weapons are out, at least for now, so I'm going to hold off on the missiles and fire the, fire the laser again. Wait until the laser charges again. I say let them have it in their engines, yeah, so they don't get away. The enemy can try to, will sometimes try to escape, and you can interfere with that by hitting their engines. Yep. And... And boosh. And down they go. Now at, this, now, at this stage of the game, the enemies are pretty easy to hit. Later on, they'll have they'll have improved engines and such as well. They'll get harder to hit, so we won't always be, like, hitting three times in a row every time the way we are now. Yeah, don't let this fool you. It gets way, way harder. Okay, now we're rewarded <laughs> way with... Way more unfair. Now we're rewarded with, uh, resources get this little atom thing that's fuel miss two missiles and 17 scrap scrap is basically your currency scrap lets you buy stuff and it also lets you upgrade your own ship and exactly. you can upgrade actually at any time you want and like actually if you're in a dangerous system you have to get to a safer one yep oh now you I'm... gotta give uh, power to the uh, med bay yeah now you see what you do is you can control your move your crew around so now D dave dave will heal here i'll click nick uh, here i can make him go over here i can make him go and so, so for instance if i wanted him to man each station, your shields and your we everything will run, except, except the helm. Everything will run, whether there's a guy at it or not, but they run more effectively if they're manned. So like here, I'll... Um, like here, if I put this, this tool tip here, it says, manned, 10% faster charge. Yeah. All right, now, okay, now Dave is... After arduous seconds in the hospital, Dave is now ready to return to duty. And... Just reattach my arm and back at yeah. it. And now here is the um, e manned evasion plus five. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna, you know, I'll show you. I'll try adding another bar to it. Okay, now right now it's level one. Dodge five, FTL time, charge time times one. Add another bar. Now it's dodge ten, FTL one point two five. Right now our char our FTL charge speed doesn't really matter because we're not in danger. But if you're like in a, if you're losing a battle or you're in a place with dangerous conditions, you'll be. It'll be very helpful to have oh, a cool. higher charge speed. All right, now let's let's explore over here. There's a store here where we can buy stuff. But first, let's go here. Maybe we can get some more resources. Sure. And die. You, you, your jump leads to a completely unremarkable binary star system. There is nothing else around. Okay, so nothing there. Oh, so th I'll get to th what that is in a little bit. That's why there's that's that time constraint I mentioned. First, let's jump to the store. The store in space. A ship engineer has set up a small shop here. And die. <laughs> Would you stop? <laughs> okay. Now, there's there, sometimes there's more stuff here. Right now, here you can buy you can buy more fuel, missiles, and drones, which are basically like little independent weapon platforms or defensive things that you can send out to help you out. You can re get repairs, which cost two per hull point. I'm going to fix. Every when you get damage, most things will damage both your system and your hull, which is your overall like life meter, basically. You can sell stuff. We don't really have much to sell right now. You can buy new weapons, like here, these are breach missiles, which have the effect of... Uh, oh. They cause hull breaches, which make their... Sh which, one, your crew has to, you know, take time to repair them. They make the ship leak oxygen, so you can potentially kill their crew that way. There's also a pike beam. Beam. The pr thing of beams is, you you target them, and like they they you target a, lo a whole line across the sh uh, you know a, a certain distance across their ship, and then the beam will fire along that line, so you can hit multiple rooms, multiple systems potentially, 
And if you're lucky, you can set the uh, enemy ship on fire. Yes. There's actually a specialized beam called the fire beam that doesn't do hull damage, but just sets shit on fire, which I'm quite fond of, actually. <laughs> and now here's, like, various uh, systems you can buy. Cloaking device. And you see, these, um, most of these systems, they are, they are, these systems are, they, they are then powered like our previous systems are. They require energy as well. Cloaking. Oh my god. I'm looking at Clone Bay. That looks awesome. Clone Bay. Automatically clones dead crew with skill penalty. Taking advantage of micro-cloning, crew heals partially every jump. Jump heal is passive and requires no power. Yeah, that's if your guy, if one of your guys gets killed, he gets brought back with lowered skills. Downside to this, which they don't really, they don't tell you here, is that it replaces your med bay with the clone bay. Mm -hmm. And like, ju you can't heal guys by just having them stand in the med bay. Oh, weird. So you become, you actually, to heal, you actually, I believe you actually become dependent on, you know, the fact that it heals between jumps. So it's kind of a double-edged sword in that respect. But, yeah. like I said, the big advantage is that it, you can bring back the dead. And mind control. Temporarily turns enemies into allies. This lets yeah. you, like, to, like, temporarily take control of, uh... There's boarding... You, you, uh, there's, like, boarding actions on the, in this game. You can send troops over to their ship. They can send guys to yours. And you can, like, attack their systems d directly by, like, sabotaging them. And this lets you take o temporarily take their guys over. This is one of the new... I believe this is one... Yeah, this is one of the new additions for the advanced version. Mm-hmm. And okay, we don't really need any to buy any supplies right now, so and we don't have enough money for any of these weapons, so I'm just gonna yep. move on. Did you want to do any upgrades, or you don't think we really Not need it? Not right? just yet. Okay. All right, now see this. This is the Rebel Advance. They're in, they're in they're they're advancing across you know space you know behind us, so we have to stay a step ahead of them. Now see this blinking red. The rebels are about to gain control of this beacon. Next turn, that will be. Or next jump, that will be in their control. Now, you can go back to systems under rebel control, but they're extremely dangerous. There's usually a, po there's a powerful ship there, and w what's worse is they'll usually be... You'll be under fire by like from like planetary-based weapons or from the, their fleet. So while you're trying to fight the other ship, there's just these giant weapon blasts flying across the screen that can damage you that you really can't do anything about. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to pass through rebel territory unless it's absolutely necessary to jump. Right. You detect an automated rebel scout attacking a small refueling outpost. Intervene to defend the outpost. Okay. Detecting the higher threat, the automated ship moves in to engage your ship. Yeah, these are, sometimes you fight uh, just dro uh, automated enemy vessels. No crew aboard. Okay, that's a drone. Enemy combat drone. Repeatedly attacks your ship. Can be shut down by damaging the enemy ship's drone system. You can you can get the equipment that allows you to deploy them as well those as well. But for now, <laughs> poke at their shields. Boop. And okay, he's firing. Yeah, he's firing that beam at me. Look, the thing about beams, beams are not very good at going through shields. Like a basic beam, like will have to you hit you have to hit them unshielded for it to work. If they have shields, but if it's powerful enough that say like say if it does two damage per room. It hit, the beam does two damage per room it hits, and they have one shield up, then it'll do one damage per room it hits, basically. And um, hit him. If it, if it only does one damage per room it hits, then it just bounces off the shield. All right, now they're disarmed. Now these can't even repair themselves, because they're, they're uh, drones, right? I believe that's correct, yeah. Oh, nice. That's then... it. You, you can't really board them, because they have no air on the board. Well, yeah. And they also, like, they're, they're largely not affected by... They're not that affected by fires, either, because the fires will fizzle out quickly. Mm-hmm. Ooh, the outpost oh. hails you after the scout was destroyed. Thanks for the help. You've been harassed nonstop by those scouts. Take this on the house. Oh, you got a drone now. Or you got some drones. Uh, yeah, but I don't have I don't have the drone control. Yeah, that's the actual drone. But what I got is, is not actually a drone. I got a drone part, which a lot... Launching drones expends drone parts. Okay. They're sort of, it's sort of the equivalent of using missiles. Like ammo. Yeah. Oh. You stumble across a forward scout of the rebel fleet. Continue. They are powering up their FTL. If they get away, they will no doubt warn the fleet of your position. Now that, what happens there is, like I said, if a scout gets away from you, then that advancing wave on the main map, that will advance faster. So you'll have to, you'll have okay. to, you'll have to, you know, flee to the exit quicker if you want to be safe. All right, so I'm gonna tar I'm gonna put a missile into their engines rather than their shield just to be on the safe side. And we have to tell y'all charging. Mm -hmm. That poor drone must be getting so frustrated, just you know, zapping us and just nothing. Oh come on! A hit. Okay, enemy FTL delayed. Nice. 
Okay, their, en their engines are temporarily out, so now we can... Sh let's take a shot at their weapons. Mm-hmm. All right, weapons down. Just so frustrated right now. That poor guy. Why? Now, take another shot at their shields. Actually, I, mean, I bet he's, like, really, really, like, enthusiastic. <laughs> really feels like he's helping. Th this, really this time it's gonna work! I know it! I got a good feeling about this one! 